Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie scott of JSA, and here with my friend Mike Cunningham, the CEO and founder of Cross Lake Fiber, here at ITW 2018. Mike, welcome to JSA TV again. Hi, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being here, Mike, and such an exciting time in the industry, so many developments, and particularly for Crosslake. Last time we chatted, uh, we were talking about that subsea connectivity between Toronto and Buffalo. What's the latest there? Well, uh, the latest is we've begun construction uh, just within the past uh, few weeks, and so we're very excited about that. I mean, it marks uh, a big milestone in terms of the, the, uh, the uh, you know, bringing the project to fruition, and so uh, we're really excited about it. And you literally have a cable installer, is that right? That's right. So we just announced actually earlier today uh, that IT International Telecom is going to be the cable installer for the Lake Ontario project. Uh, and we're, we're, we're very excited to bring them on board. I mean, this is uh, their, their core business, installing cables. And uh, it, it's a, a very good, I think, uh, uh, solution for us. And we're very excited about working with them. And for sure, this uh, there's a buzz in the industry. Uh, all of our um, collective friends together, we're, we're all talking about Cross Lake these days. Why is this cable so unique? Uh, I mean, new cable developments, I think, are very unique anywhere. And this is a very unique uh, system because it goes through uh, a lake, but it's really a long-haul focused cable on the, the wholesale market as opposed to just serving local connectivity. And it's a, uh, a diverse uh, a diverse cable that provides a, a very physically diverse path away from the other uh, routes that go between Toronto and, and Buffalo. Um, and it is a, a shorter path as well, so it provides a lot of uh, additional benefit to, to customers on the system. And it provides dark fiber infrastructure, is that right, in, in an area that's, uh, that might not have much available? That's exactly it. I mean, we're providing uh, dark fiber, which is our, our primary service to the market, and that really allows um, other carriers to buy dark fiber and scale for the first time, which is, is unique to the long-haul market in Canada. And now skipping over to the East Coast, some exciting developments there as well. Um, you have a second so count them, one and two. Most, most folks have their hands filled with just one. Mike Cunningham has, has two going on. It's the second subsea cable system being built, um, and it's called the WALL-E uh, project. Can you tell us a little bit uh, more about that? A absolutely. So the, uh, the WALL-E system is a system that goes from uh, Wall, New Jersey to Long Island. Uh, it, the name kind of uh, stuck. It wasn't planned to, <laughs> to be used as the name. Um, but it's very similar in terms of its design in that it is a high fiber count system where we're providing dark fiber over a physically diverse path between uh, Long Island and, and New Jersey. And it's definitely designed to provide uh, you know, that, that redundant path as well as to uh, provide additional options for transoceanic cables that land in either Long Island or in New Jersey uh, for them to really glass through to, to other auto other routes that they would want to get, get through. And there's certainly a lot of subsea development happening, uh, particularly leading into um, Wally location. So Wall, uh, New Jersey, and JFX facility there, and LI, Long Island being 1025 Connect. Uh, just between those two facilities alone, there's, there's so many subsea cables that uh, have pops there, huh? Absolutely. I mean, the reason why we selected 1025 Connect and NJFX for our two landing points is simply because we are providing dark fiber, and so we need to get to endpoints that have the critical mass of, uh, of, of fiber connectivity in order for us to really um, have a large enough potential pool of customers. And, and those are the two endpoints uh, that facilitate that for, for the Wally system. And then so your fiber, in a way, could circumvent the need to send traffic through the island of Manhattan. Is that accurate? Uh, th that's exactly it. I mean, we're providing diversity specifically uh, around Manhattan. Uh, we've, you know, hit a few milestones on the front end of the project, uh, which are the, the permitting, uh, the front end of the permitting, and the, the route design. And we've just gone out for the marine survey uh, procurement right now, which is the first big milestone for, for any subsea project. Wonderful, wonderful, uh, and, and again, you know, the need for security and diversity, uh, particularly in our subsea markets, can't be emphasized enough, so uh, we're excited that 
bold men like you are, are, are um, putting up the, the, the hard fight to do this for us. Um, okay, one last crazy question, but we had to ask because uh, it was such an interesting, um, you know, tactical question. Uh, we, we noticed that um, you are utilizing this specialized cable installation vessel. And it's just such a tactile question, can't resist. What is so special about this vessel? <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, cable installation vessels are, are specialized and designed specifically to install submarine cables, uh, whether telecom or power, uh, as opposed to the alternative solution, which would be a barge solution, where essentially you get a tug, a barge, and, and you kind of put together a, a makeshift solution to install a cable that way. So we're very excited about having a uh, IT's uh, uh, ship to, to go and, and facilitate that for us. Um, it, it provides for a, a very good, I'll say, plan of work and ability to get things like burial of the cable in the seabed. Um, and so we're, we're very excited to have this solution. Oh, very exciting, very exciting. Okay, um, taking a look out uh, to the horizon, um, what are the RFS dates for these two projects? Uh, so the Lake Ontario project will be in service uh, this October, uh, October 2018. And for the Wally project between Wall and Long Island, uh, the in-service date will be June of 2019. Wow, coming up fast. So absolutely a company to watch and a leader of the company to watch. So thank you, Mike, for also uh, being so kind with your time and, and coming on to JSA TV and telling your story. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking. Thank you.